Hello and welcome back. Today we are talking about John Owen's book, Communion with the Triune God, and today's video is on the topic of God's grace, and uh, the topic is that God's grace makes you lovely, makes the Christian lovely. Uh, John Owen has been talking about the purchased grace of God, that is, the grace that Jesus purchased uh, for us uh, through his life, his death, his resurrection. So, so when we are saved, uh, we're forgiven, right? And we're changed, that is, we're born again. And this is all because of grace. But again, it is purchased grace, purchased by Jesus' merits in his life, death, and resurrection. So, so Jesus purchased your acceptance with God. That's the first thing, right? Before salvation, uh, our sin and guilt separated us from God. And Jesus removes our guilt uh, by bearing our curse and paying our ransom, and thereby he removes what separates us from God. Now we don't have to be separated from God anymore. We can be uh, in close fellowship with God. And we might think of this as the purchased grace of forgiveness because our sins are forgiven and, and we're forgiven and we're justified and we're able to be in right standing with God. But next, Owen wants us to turn our attention to the purchased grace of sanctification. Right? And by that we mean the grace of God that helps you become more and more like Jesus. Right? So we are being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ by the work of the Spirit in our lives. And that is by God's grace at work in our lives. John Owen says, Jesus then makes us lovely. And again, we're lovely because we're becoming more like Jesus. The more we're like Jesus, the more lovely we are. And so Jesus then makes us lovely. Now, there's two main ways that this happens. Uh, one way is by taking away what defiles us, right? Like, and then the second way is by giving you cleanness. So let's just look at both of those. First, uh, the removing of defilement. And there's really three points here under removing the defilement. He, he removes our defilement because Jesus cleans your nature, right? By nature, uh, we have sinful natures and Jesus cleans that up. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, verses 9 and 10 talks about a list of many sins, including sexual immorality, idolatry, adultery, right? And so it, it just lists this long list of things that really characterized us before our conversion. And then verse 11 says, And such were some of you, but you were washed, right? And so since you were washed, uh, this is the idea that Jesus cleans the part of us that defiles us. Right, and so we're uh, by our our in our nature. Our nature is clean and cleansed by Jesus. Secondly, Jesus cleans your person. That is you individually. Uh, Hebrews ten fourteen. For by a single offering, He has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And so Jesus not only cleans your nature; He just cleans you as a person. Uh, he cleans your nature and He cleans you. And, and then thirdly, Jesus cleans your imperfect obedience. Right? Even on our best days, we don't, we're not perfect, right? Our obedience is still tainted with imperfections, right? Uh, we mostly do something for God's glory, even at our, at our, on our best days. We mostly, okay, I, I did this. I, I, I gave to, you know, the poor here. And I did that mostly for God's glory, but there might have been a part of me that still wanted people to just notice that I had done it, right? And, and there's a little tainting almost in, in, in almost everything we do with a little bit of selfishness, a little bit of, of selfish motives, and not purely for God's uh, glory. And in these ways, right, Jesus comes in and sort of uh, perfects that imperfect obedience that we have. And so in these and other ways, Jesus removes your defilement. He makes up for the fact that you still sin. And again, this is a wonderful thing that Jesus does. But Jesus not only does that, sort of cleans that up and covers up your defilement, cleans up your defilement, he also gives you cleanness, right? He makes you cleaner, right? He makes you more like Jesus, right? And when we say the, the, the work that Jesus is doing here, we're not saying that it contributes to our salvation, right? Jesus alone saves us, but again, he saves us and changes us. He makes us into a new creation, a new person, and a person who over time is more like Jesus. And so uh, we're going to look at three things here about how Jesus cleans us up. And, and one of the ways that Jesus cleans us up uh, and makes us more like Jesus is he gives us the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to dwell inside of us. Romans 8, 11 says, The Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Right? <laughs> so the Holy Spirit, who dwelt in Jesus, dwells in you. And, and the main way you become like Jesus is the Holy Spirit inside of you. 
right? So, so believers, when we, we come to saving faith, it's the work of the Spirit to bring us to faith, but it's also the Spirit who lives inside of us uh, post-conversion. And so that's one of the ways that we become more clean is the Holy Spirit is in us and working inside of us. Secondly is what we call, and or Owen calls, habitual grace. That is grace that's always working, right? Uh, opposing the desires of the flesh, uh, right? Causing you to want to walk in the ways of God, right? To know God, to obey God, to love God, right? The Spirit, and, and, and there, there's that work going on inside of you all of the time, pushing you toward uh, greater holiness and, and being more like Jesus. Number three, there is actually enabling power. Uh, John 15, 5 is an important text on this. I am the vine, Jesus says, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So one of the points in this text is you can't do anything without Jesus. You need Jesus to do anything at all, anything good, anything right, right? But also we learn that he gives us power just like a vine does to the branch. So the, the, the branch, if it's going to bear fruit on the end of that branch, it's going to have to be in the trunk of the tree or in the vine of the tree, right? And we must, therefore, also abide in Jesus, right? And as we abide in him, he, and we're connected to Jesus, he enables us, he gives us enabling power to produce in us what he commands that we produce, Right? He wants us to be uh, bear the fruit of the Spirit, and He is doing that in us. He's producing the fruit in us, and He produces the fruit that He commands us to produce. Uh, and thus, we see our dependence on Jesus. So now we see the second thing. Jesus cleans us. Well, Owen ends our, uh, this chapter by speaking of our adoption, right? We are the children of God in Jesus Christ, right? We are adopted. We are part of His family. But honestly, when we are, uh, at first, we are children who don't look a whole lot like a family member, right? When we're first converted at the core, we're sinners who sin, and we uh, have very little about us that acts righteously. Yet in time, Jesus works to change us, right? Immediately, we're changed, we're born again. But increasingly, through what we call progressive sanctification, uh, we become more and more like Jesus, so that our defilement is removed, Right? Our, our, our nature and our person are cleansed, and we are transformed from the inside out by, again, the indwelling spirit the, and God's grace and the enablement of uh, God's uh, power to strengthen us to do his commands. And we want to praise the Lord then for God's purchased grace. Right? It's a transforming grace that makes us more like Jesus.